Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. I got an interesting request from one of my champion patrons uh, about making a pen holder in a round shape out of wood. And I did a video on making different shapes with slots and tabs and living hinges about three years ago. And I've, I went to my channel, looked for it, couldn't find it. And I spent about 40 minutes looking for it. I got to get better with keywords and descriptions and things like that. But I just, I couldn't find it. So I decided to make it again. And I didn't think about making a video. And I, I made a prototype. This is the prototype. Um, this is, let me get a pen, a couple of pens and put it in here. This is pretty much what she's looking for. Um, a pen holder with slots and tabs on the bottom and just circular on the inside and circular all the way around and where the seam meets up it needs to be uh, squarely positioned all the way across so half slot on either end of the actual living hinge so let's go ahead and make this i should have recorded this when i made this prototype um, but let's jump into light burn real quick and I'll show you. So this is the final design for hers. It's larger than uh, I wanted it to be. Uh, I, pref I prefer being at three inches. The one I showed you works just fine for holding pens. But anyway, uh, this is the size that she wanted. So uh, I put the uh, Master Chief's uh, insignia on here and uh, an anchor on both sides. And when these two sides meet... The anchor will be on both uh, both sides equally positioned, and so will the insignias. So uh, let's start this over from scratch. Let me move this just off to the side. We'll use the white space over here, and I'm going to make a smaller one than that. So we're going to uh, come over here. I'm using Lightburn version 2.02, .02, and we're going to grab the ellipse tool. I'm going to hold down shift draw out a circle. Let's make the base first because that's the most important part. And the base needs to be, um, we're going to do a three inch one. So we'll do three, three inches and come back to millimeters over here, 76.2. And now we need to make the slots. So I'm using three millimeter wood or I did on this project anyway. Uh, so now we're going to come here, click and hold, grab the rectangle tool, just draw out a little rectangle select it unlock it and we want to make uh i made these eight by three eight by three and that way it's a loose fit but with the flex of the wood it'll hold it in place in the slots and you can glue it if you wanted to so now with that one selected i'm going to hold shift i'm going to select this one and i'm going to align it to the middle no i want to align it to the top and over here like that so now we've got that pretty much aligned okay hard stop hard stop in the video i want to add something here because um, i'm going to talk about moving the graphics around and you guys should know this and i forgot to mention it so up here at the gear icon i'm going to click on that and under units and grids I set my control plus arrow at a half a millimeter move increment. I set my arrow key at one millimeter move increment. So when I press my arrow key, it'll move a millimeter. When I press control plus arrow, it'll move a half. This is important to know for the rest of this video as I'm moving things around. Uh, so I just wanted to cut in here and explain this to you. Back to the video. I want these slots to be about uh, three millimeters in. So there's a half one. And that will uh, give room for a little edge on here. And let's actually make it one, one millimeter. I believe that's what I used. If you look at the example here, that's about a millimeter or so like extended or inside the circle so now we've got that 
and we need to make a reference point on here for the exact center of this. So I'm going to grab my pencil tool. I'm going to click, drag, uh, click again, and then right click to get rid of the pencil tool. Now I can take this reference point, hold down shift, select that rectangle and bullseye them like that. And I'm just going to put this onto a tool path. Okay, so now I know exactly where the center of that rectangle is for that slot. Now what I can do is go ahead and group these two and come over here to my circular array. So with these two selected, I'm going to select this circle and then I'm going to come over here to my circular array. And I've already got 10 copies here from the last time that I did it. So that's perfect. 10 copies. So we'll just say OK to that. And there we go. Now with this, this one here, I'm going to press Control on the letter D to duplicate that. Put it onto the tool path. Hold Control and grab a corner and size this down to the middle. So right about there is the middle. And this is not an exact science. So now I'm going to select this inner circle. I'm going to come over here to edit. I'm going to convert this to a path because we need to insert one node on this. Now that it's a path, we can come over here to the left to node edit. Click on that. Zoom into this one right here in the middle and press the I key for insert and you'll see that it inserted a node there. The reason that we're doing this is because uh, we need to figure out what the distance is from center to center here so we can make our tabs. So let's come back to the uh, left side over here, come to the measuring tool and on the measuring tool we want just that piece. See if we didn't in insert that node it would give us one quarter of the circle. And that's not what we want. We need just the distance from here to here. And you'll see up in the top there, it says 21.73 millimeters. So I'm going to say OK to that. I'm going to grab some text. I'm just going to type in here 21.73. That way I don't forget. So now I, I know that number. So that is the distance. And we need to know also what the circumference of this circle is. So the easiest way to do that, that I've found, is just click on the little rotary setup tool up here. And uh, we'll put in, you'll see the width is 69.109. So we'll put in here object diameter, 69.109, just like that. And here is our circumference, 217. 0.112 and this is for setting up the actual wood itself so we're going to go ahead and copy that right click and copy and say okay and now we're going to take a rectangle and we're going to just draw out any rectangle here and we're going to come to the uh, width up here in millimeters i'm going to click on mm to highlight that and i'm just going to paste this in here that number press enter that is the width to wrap all the way around here and the height uh, i'm just going to make the height uh three inches i think i did on this one so that would be what 76.2 so we'll do 76.2 for the height and there we go all set now what we have to do here let's grab one of these one of these um, slots. I could just draw out another one, but I'll just do control and the letter D to duplicate it and drag it off to the side. And what we're going to do is use this, snap it into the corner right there, and we can actually snap it right there. It would be perfect. And right in the middle, and you see that uh, it'll snap in lots of different places that's where i want it right there in the middle and now we're going to do all of our tabs 
So we know we have 10 tabs, right? But we won't be able to put 10 on here. So we're going to do 11 and split. The reason I have this in the middle, we're going to split the two ends so that it locks the two ends in place. So let's come to the array tab over here. And we need to do 11. So let's, let's type in 11. And uh, that's actually pretty close, <laughs> what we have here, the X spacing. 20 point, uh, it's actually 21.73, so we'll do that 21.73. Uh, I got that wrong, 21.73. Okay, so now I got it right. And if I did this all correctly, you'll see that the blue lines for my reference point line up with either side of these. And that looks pretty good. Now, the only thing that we need to do here now, I grouped them. I'm going to ungroup them. One thing we need to do is change this from 8 millimeters to 4 millimeters. So up here, you'll see the anchor tool. So I want this to anchor to the right side. So I'm going to choose the right side. And that'll be anchored to here. And I'm going to change my distance to four millimeters and press enter and there we have a perfect four millimeter tab i'm going to do the same thing on this side but on this side i want to anchor it to the left so i'm going to come back here to my anchor tool anchor to the left click over here do four and we're just slightly off here just a hair and i can fix that by doing this the measurements that you know I'm doing are actually not perfect, so uh, I'm, they're just close. And close is good enough when you're doing this. So now I've got everything set. I can go ahead and uh, actually, you know what? At this point, I can grab this on the right, the T2 toolpath, and delete it because we no longer need that. We're all set to go here. So now I'll just grab all of these down here and I'll hold shift and I'll grab the uh, actual rectangle and we'll come over here on the, on the side to the weld and we'll go ahead and weld those. And that's it. That is the entire process. Now this piece has nine tabs and then a half of a tab and a half of a tab, which makes 10. This is 10 altogether. And it will be a perfect fit. So without getting into the uh, living hinge part, which I'm, I'm sure that you all know how to do a simple living hinge. Uh, this, this is very, very easy with the array tool. Uh, I just wanted to cover the slots and tabs in this video. Okay, hold up. Wait a minute. Uh, I can hear the comments <laughs> right now. Uh, down below, people are going to say, oh, well, this file is totally useless because it doesn't have a living hinge. And why should I make it? Okay, I guess we should talk about the living hinge. So let's go back over <laughs> into Lightburn and talk about how to make a living hinge. I'm going to make this extremely simple, as, do this as simply as I possibly can. Uh, I'm going to look at the height of this, and especially the distance from uh, here to, let me hold shift, there, is 76.20. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to make a line over here. I'm going to click, press shift to get a perfectly straight line, click again, right click to get rid of the line pencil tool. And I'm going to make this um, 20, 40, 60. I mean, I'm going to make it 20, 20 millimeters high like that. I think that should be pretty good. And I will take and snap it to there. And then hold shift, select this one, get it right to the middle. Okay. Come back over here with my keyboard. I'm going to hold control. 
go a half a millimeter, one millimeter, one and a half millimeters out from the edge. So three arrow keys while holding the control key. Now I'm going to do control in the letter D. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to do the same thing, control, and I'm going to go half, one, one and a half like that. But I am now going to anchor this one to the top. So I'm going to hold shift, select the top, and come up here and position it to the top, just like that. Now I want these lines to go further than that. So uh, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to hold control, grab one of the ends, and move it up to about the size I think I want. That looks probably good right there. And then I'm going to take this one. I'm not going to hold control. Just going to grab the end and get it down to about there, which uh, I was thinking 30. So we'll just do 30. Oops, I didn't meant to anchor it. I need to anchor it to the top and then do 30 like that. Yeah, that looks good. And then I'll control in the letter D, duplicate that. Then I'll select the outer part here and anchor that one to the bottom. And I actually can't anchor that one to the bottom because we've got the uh, tabs there. So I'm just going to slowly move this up to right about there. And now that looks pretty perfect. So I've got my three lines and we're ready to run uh, our array. So I'm going to grab all three of those lines, just like that. And I'm going to click on the array tool over here. Now on the array tool, I don't know how many columns we'll need. We'll need more than one for sure. And that looks perfect. So uh, I've got two columns. I'm going to put the center at three millimeters because they're a millimeter and a half each. So we have to double that. And then all I have to do is run my X spacing. Oops, wrong one. <laughs> X spacing needs to be three, sorry. Run my columns up over here till we get to the other side. This, this is not, you know, rocket science. There are a dozen ways to do this. So uh, this is not, you know, the absolute way of doing it, but there are your slots and tabs. And you can make these any size you want. You can make them any shape you want. You can use diamonds. You can use squares. You can use anything that you want to use. Making a living hinge is very, very simple. You could even make a hinge and then uh, cut it out of another shape. So um, I just wanted to throw that in there because I know that somebody is going to say, we can't make this file on our own to practice and be successful at it without the living hinge. So there you go. There's the living hinge. <laughs> so anyway, as always, I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.